Hi everyone, I'm Benita Story, also known as the Fiber Pusher, and I want to talk to you today about a collection of clothing I have created for myself. These are all wool clothing. If you don't know me, let me give you a little background in my history with wool. Um, I owned, along with a friend of mine named Sandy Ferguson, a wool business for a little over nine years called Dyed in the Wool. And what we did is we went around to all kinds of farms um, in the region around Indiana. So the states around us, plus we ordered wool from North Carolina and Pennsylvania and Virginia. And basically we brought in all of these different breeds of wool, the highest quality that we could find. In fact, a lot of our the wool that we sold were ribbon winners, grand champions. Um, I, I bought Grand Champions from the Indiana State Fair, from the Ohio State Fair, and from, um, I, forget, I don't know, North American International Livestock Expo. And so, as I collected the wool to sell, of course, I had to work with it so I could help people buy the right wool for the project that they wanted to work on. Or if they were a beginning spinner, make sure they got something that was easier to spin and not so frustrating for them and, and to help them learn and encourage. And For me, it's, it's all about the wool for the project, not finding the project for the wool. Anyways, because I spent so many years doing that and I, I washed, I spun, I carded, I dyed, I knitted with, I mean, I thoroughly tested every breed of, that we dealt with. And not only that, um, I wrote the breed study worksheet and worksheet book, which is a, it's a book. We sold it in print form. I now sell it um, as a, um, it's, it's on CD, it's PDFs that you can print it yourself. Um, but I really, really, really got to know wool. And because I got to know wool, I fell in love with the fiber. Wool is cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It's the original natural wicking fabric. I wear wool socks year round, literally. I wear so wool socks summer through summer, summer all the way around, because they keep they keep my feet from sweating. And by keeping my feet from sweating, I don't worry about blisters when I'm like hiking or walking or anything. I just love wool. Because I love wool so much, I have gotten to the point where I am now collecting wool clothing. When I say got to the point now where I've actually been collecting wool clothing for a long time. Um, some of the clothing that I have got, I've had since the 90s. Um, so I'm trying to get more and more vintage stuff, but I'm also keeping with the quality of wool. And I am going to show you today the current collection of wool that I have. And I'm gonna to talk to you about where it fits in with me, whether I can wear it or not, whether I want to alter it so that I can wear it, um, or whether I can wear it uh, sometime in the future because I'm still losing weight. <laughs> so anyways, I wanted to kind of give you an overview of my current wool clothing collection as it stands right now. So. Let's go. This cream colored swing coat that I found at an antique mall, believe it or not, I paid $35 for this coat and it is in exquisite condition. It's slightly big for me, but you know for a coat, you like wearing things under it and I love this coat very much. This next one is a London Fog Coat that I got it at another antique mall. I paid $20 for it. It did need some work, but it is warm, it's heavy, it's comfortable, and even though it's a man's coat, I love it very much and plan to get a lot of use out of it. When I bought this coat, it had one button hanging onto it right down here. And obviously, I needed more than that. So I went to Joann's, and they didn't have anything exactly like that. But they had these. And they're darker color, but I'd be honest with you, the tan in the button here 
I think actually goes with the coat better than the original did. So I'm going to replace that button. I need four of them, and I'm going to sew the buttons on this coat real quick so I can make it wearable. While I've got it here, I wanted to show you some issues with this coat. Um, not only did it not have buttons, but I'm going to say that we've had some moth nibblage on here and here. And there's a few spots on the coat that looks like it's had a little bit of moth damage. I mean, look at there. But um, whatever it is, is no longer an issue with it. And so, yeah, there's some the pieces and stuff like that that's got, got a little threadbare and everything. But you know what? It's a nice, warm coat. It's heavy. I really just don't think it's going to make that big of a difference to me. I mean, I'm going to be wearing it as an everyday coat to, to like, work. Um, eventually, because it is a man's coat, as Scott loses weight, eventually he'll be wearing this coat. So, um, anyways, let's go ahead and get some buttons sewn on. The thread I'm going to use is Guterman's. It's 100% cotton thread. Um, I would have liked to have gotten some buttonhole twist or button twist or whatever you want to call it, but they didn't have it in brown or tan. They had, you know, black and white and stuff like that. And I really thought both of them would not, you know, look good. But this actually, I mean, look, the thread pretty much disappears into the color of the coat. So I think this will work just fine. I'll just um, make sure I uh, double it up real good so it'll hang on a little stronger. Now, here's a sad part of me getting older. When I was a child, I was very nearsighted. You could put a card right up against my nose, and I could read it. That's how nearsighted I was. As I've gotten older, my eyes have completely done a 180. I'm now very farsighted. Um, I can see signs um, driving down the road faster than people with glasses on. Um, but because of that, I cannot thread a needle anymore without assistance and see I mean there I think I finally got it through I got it through I cannot see the hole on a needle I have to use a needle threader for the sewing machine I have to use a needle threader for anything that I want to do sewing even we're embroidery and stuff anymore I have to use a needle threader So, um, no, I cannot see, and I don't think that's, I don't think that's a small hole. It's just, I can't see it. So, let's go ahead and sew a button on. Now, luckily, I can see where the button used to be, so that's going to make my life a lot easier trying to sew this on. Now, I'm not going to sew it on here horribly tight because I need to give it some room to actually go through these thick buttonholes. if this is correct or not but this is something my mom showed me how to do when it came to sewing on buttons for coats and stuff in order to make that nice and strong is she would have me bring the needle up through but not don't go through the button and then wrap the thread several times around the button 
kind of giving it a bit of a, a shank in a will away and then take the needle back through and tie it off on the other side so that's what I'm going to do and if you look it gives you a roundy roundy on the uh, button and it kind of helps lift the button away from the fabric so it'll make it easier to button on So my mom always just did this twice, but I always kind of want to do this three times because I want to make sure that this is good and locked in there. So there we go. Button number one. Let's see how that fits through the buttonhole. Beautifully. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Three more to go. I'll see you in a bit. This is my current coat that I wear to work. It is a Montgomery coat. I actually ordered it out of England because at the time I couldn't find a wool coat. But the buttons don't exactly match the coat or the leather or the toggles. And it kind of looks a little weird next to it. So, eh. I think I'm going to replace the buttons on this, but it is a good warm coat for the winter and I love it. This is a jacket I found at an antique mall in Indianapolis and look, it's Harris Tweed. I love Harris Tweed, but I found this. I paid $25 for it and look at this. This jacket fits me. It fits me really well. Now, it's a men's jacket, so it's not exactly shaped for a woman's body. But you know what? I don't care. It fits great across the shoulders. It just, this jacket fits me, and I enjoy it. And it's got pockets. Who doesn't love pockets? So, um, this is a coat that I'm going to be getting a lot of wear out of. I'm going to definitely wear this to work. I know, look, inside pockets. More pockets. Gosh, I love men's coats. Why don't women's coats have pockets like that? Yeah, this is a nice one. This is another Harris Tweed coat. And by the way, those code numbers on there don't mean anything. I actually contacted Harris Tweed about that to find out how old jackets like this were with the numbers. And they never actually kept track of the numbers. Now, this coat's huge on me. So, um, yeah, it's going to need a lot of adjustments. I'm thinking about just completely taking it apart and putting a pattern over it and recutting it out, lining it all. Try to keep as much as I can, like with the pockets, with the lining on the inside, and obviously the label that says Harris Tweed. The length on it, eh, I think it's a little long. So I'm thinking about kind of, you know, shortening it a little bit to be more for somebody my height. I mean, I'm five foot one and it's it's long. So uh, yeah, but look at the fabric. It's gray and lavender and got a little blue in there. I do love the fact that this is a Harris Tweed coat. Now, this is just a Stafford coat. It, it's not a Harris Tweed, it's not Pendleton, but I like the color on it. I love the fact that it's got the elbow patches, and those are real leather suede elbow patches. Yes, it's too big for me, but, and it's too long, and the sleeves are too long, and, but you know, it's not as big on me as that Harris Tweed was, and I think this one won't be a bad one to cut down. I do like it. Um, I love the color of it. It's just one of the ones that I think I would get a lot more wear out of it. I like browns and stuff like that, and so I think it'll fit nicely. So I'm going to cut this one down. This last suit coat I'm going to show you is absolutely wonderful. For one thing, it's made in Italy. Um, it's Italian merino wool. It is butter soft. It is just really lovely, and I like this coat. Yeah, it's 
gosh, it's too big for me. <laughs> but, and look how wide it is across the shoulders and the sleeve length and everything. But I really think I can cut this down and um, turn it into something that fits me. Um, I just think it's awfully nice. It's so soft. Oh my gosh, this jacket is so soft. I want to keep it, I want to wear it, and I want to use it for something. Isn't that fabric gorgeous? I love that small houndstooth plaid. Yeah, this is something I want to keep. The skirt I have here is a Pendleton Black Watch plaid skirt. It is fully lined. It has pockets. I like the length on it. I think it's flattering for me. And uh, this is one of them I plan to get a lot of wear out of. I love that the tag says it's an authentic Black Watch tartan. This absolutely beautiful Pendleton wool skirt, um, it's a generic plaid. I looked really carefully through the clan's uh, tartans. It is not a official tartan, so it's just a plaid. But it is lovely. I like the knife pleats, and I can't wait to wear it one of these days. This plaid here is another Pendleton wool. It's not lined. It is a quote-unquote a popular uh, plaid that anyone can wear. Now, I will say that this one and the one before it, I cannot wear yet, but I will. As you can see, the length differences between these skirt, two skirts is by about a couple of inches. The red one's a little longer than the blue one, but I really don't care. This suit is a Jones of New York suit. I'm pretty sure it's from the mid-90s. Uh, it could be as uh, early as the late 80s, but it's definitely from the mid-90s at least because I believe that's when I bought it. I think I got this at um, Goodwill. I probably paid five bucks for it. Now, it's a little long for me. I think I would like to shorten the jacket maybe. Um... I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Do I? Do I not? Eh, I haven't made up my mind. And it's got these funky, big, huge sleeve cuffs on it, which to me are a little big. Again, it's the 90s, and this kind of thing was the way it was. Um, but all in all, it fits me nicely. Um, I like the way the skirt is. The skirt's a little short for me, but oh well. But it is a Jones of New York, and I can't complain. This skirt is a fully lined Harris Tweed skirt. I bought it off of eBay for $35. It fits me so beautifully. Look at this. Isn't this nice? It's got this really nice pleat in the front, which actually gives it some extra room, which means I can move around in it a little bit better. I just think it fits me beautifully. I like the length. I like the fact that it has pockets. Those darts in the back hugs my hips beautifully. I really like this skirt. And did I mention it's Harris Tweed? Yeah. Oh, in case you wanted to know where I got these shoes, I got them off of Amazon, and I'll put a link to them down below. They're comfortable. So now that you've seen what I currently have, and I will be the first to admit, my main collecting objective is Harris Tweed. I adore Harris Tweed. I love the fact that it's sourced locally to the Hebridean Islands. I like the fact that it's spun and dyed and woven all right there in cottage industry um, on the Outer Hebrides. I think it's the Her Isle of Harris and the Isle of Lewis that are the two that basically take care of it. I love Harris Tweed. I absolutely love the colors. I love everything about it. And so that's what I mostly collect. The things that I've collected besides Harris Tweed, um, I like Pendleton wool. I mean, I really love Pendleton wool. Um, it's an American wool um, manufacturer. And they, again, they buy all of their wool from the United States, which I really love. Um, it's just... I this is just in the collection I wanted to show it to you also the fact that I talk about what I want to do with some of the stuff that doesn't fit me especially the stuff that's way too big for me I obviously have things that I need to do with them in order to wear them why collect them if I can't wear them and what's been really nice is the ones that I can wear I've started wearing to work and uh, yeah that's been fun too um I, why, like I said, why collect it if I can't wear it? I don't want to just collect it for collection's sake. 
I want to get yeast out of it. And like I said, I love wool. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I, if you would like to follow me on more things that I do, I do sewing videos, I do cooking videos, I do natural dyeing, I do wool spinning. I've got a clo slow cloth woven project that I'm spinning for correct right now. Um, I have the warp completely spun. I'm working on the weft. Eventually, I will be making a wool suit out of that, um, be weaving the fabric and everything. So if this is the stuff that interests you and you'd like to see more of it, hit subscribe. Um, I will be having more things come out. So I hope you come along the ride with me, and I thank you for watching. Bye.